Storm Tracker 13 forecast first, sponsored by Conway Medical Center. Those temperatures already cooling down, especially as we head into tomorrow morning. In fact, already at 50 degrees on the dot in Florence, 46 in Scranton and Marion, 45 in Conway, 56 a little bit closer to the coast along the Grand Strand. Those temperatures all going to continue to cool down as a result of those clear skies. Good news is the wind speeds continuing to calm down after a breezy start to today. We're looking at wind not being a factor through the rest of tonight. In fact, what you're waking up to tomorrow, definitely light jacket weather, 48 degrees along the beaches, 44 inland. Temperatures by noon struggling to be into the mid 60s with highs in the middle to low 70s. More details on the rest of your work week forecast coming up in just a bit. Coverage you can count on at 11 starts now. Good Sunday evening to you. I'm Taylor Hernandez. And I'm Matt Fortin. Thanks for joining us for News 13 at 11's local coverage you can count on. Tonight, a North Carolina man is behind bars following a shooting last night at a Myrtle Beach resort. Myrtle Beach police say that shooting happened about 11:30 last night inside the Ocean Reef Resort on North Ocean Boulevard. <laughs> Officers say they found one person with injuries who was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. Jamie Lee Pickett of Wadesboro, North Carolina, was arrested. Police say the shooting started as a domestic situation between Pickett and another person, and the victim tried to intervene. Highway Patrol took Pickett into custody after he was involved in a wreck, and he'll be charged with attempted murder. A man suspected of killing his ex-girlfriend was arrested this weekend in Myrtle Beach. Charles Combs of Charlotte has been charged with first-degree murder in the death of LaPortia Baldwin of Gastonia, North Carolina. Her body was found last week in Fairfield County, South Carolina, after she had been missing. Combs was identified as the suspect, and police began searching. He was taken into custody Saturday in Myrtle Beach and will be extradited to Mecklenburg County. This investigation is ongoing. And one person is dead tonight after a wreck early this morning in Darlington County. South Carolina Highway Patrol says the crash happened around 5.30 this morning along Highway 403 near Andrews Mill Road. That's when troopers say a pickup truck went off the road and overturned. The Darlington County Coroner's Office has identified the victim in this wreck as 39-year-old Jose Shannon. Highway Patrol is investigating this crash. And new at 11 tonight, a Conway man died after a moped crash earlier this week in Loris. The crash happened Wednesday on Highway 554 in Loris. The Horry County Coroner's Office says 35-year-old George Allen Jeffords died at the hospital yesterday from those injuries. South Carolina Highway Patrol is investigating. And a North Myrtle Beach man died Friday after getting hurt in a motorcycle crash nearly two weeks ago. The county coroner's office says Kenneth Dolby died. The crash happened near the corner of Highway 17 and Robert Edge Parkway back on October 2nd. North Myrtle Beach police investigated that wreck. And new at 11, a high school student now hailed a hero after saving his father's life. News 13's Melissa Myers spoke with a father and son who say this experience is something they would have never imagined happening to them. I'm close to my dad, so I was freaking out that I was like going to lose him out of nowhere. 17 year old Patrick Gallagher and his father Pat were playing video games when all of a sudden Pat went into cardiac arrest. One second he was he was there and then the next he, I looked over and it just didn't seem like he was there. Followed by a state of shock and panic, Patrick immediately called 911. After checking for a pulse, he began giving his father CPR until paramedics arrived. Like there was no preparation for it and it I had always thought it would never happen to someone like me. Like, I'm, and it was in a moment where minutes mattered, and it was happening to me. So. Pat spent nearly a week in the ICU, hooked up to a defibrillator. He also battled COVID. Doctors say if Patrick hadn't acted as fast as he did, his father would not be alive today. Of course, amazing. I didn't think he would actually be able to do something like that, but <laughs> I'm glad he was. He's definitely a hero to me. So. The family currently has a GoFundMe set up to help with Pat's medical expenses. While they say coming up with the money may be stressful, they're already seeing support pour in from family and friends. I'd rather have that stress than the stress of him not being here. So, very good to see the support. I know, I know, it makes him feel a lot better about things. Definitely. Reporting for News 13, I'm Melissa Myers. What a great story there. Thank you, Melissa. Taking a look at the week ahead now, Conway City Council will meet tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Council then will take a look at some rezoning and annexation ordinances, as well as acceptance of bids to buy some new equipment for the city. 
And at tomorrow's North Myrtle Beach City Council meeting, city leaders will have their first reading on two ordinances that look at flooding. One is to adopt revised flood damage control standards. Another is to adopt revised flood insurance study and flood insurance rate maps issued by FEMA. That meeting is scheduled for 6.30 tomorrow night. And staying in North Myrtle Beach, the city's planning commission will meet at 5 o'clock Tuesday. Leaders there will review plans for hundreds of new homes west of the Intracoastal Waterway. That includes plots in the Barefoot Resort and the Grand Dunes North development. The city says these are among the last areas that can be developed within North Myrtle Beach city limits. There's not a lot of large se sections of land left in the city to develop. There's a golf course or two. and. Ultimately, you know, it's anybody's guess, but ultimately those will probably yield to development of some kind. You don't want to clog up everything within the city limits east of the waterway because it's just not capable of, of handling it. Also happening Tuesday, Horry County leaders will vote on a proposed funding plan for Interstate 73 during a county council meeting. Council will vote on that resolution that would dedicate up to $4.2 million of the county's 1.5% hospitality fee revenue to the construction of the Horry County section of Interstate 73. The resolution would allow that dedication annually for up to 30 years and is contingent on the commitment of adequate state funding. Council's administration committee voted in favor of this resolution a couple weeks ago, sending it to the full council. And Horry County plans to host a drop-in community meeting at the Carolina Forest Rec Center on Wednesday for people to learn more about a proposed rezoning request at the Wizard Golf Course. The proposed request is to develop the golf course. The meeting will give people a chance to discuss the redevelopment plan with the project agent, who told News 13 last week he doesn't plan to share additional details before this meeting. Count on News 13 for updates on that proposal. And happening tomorrow, a memorial service for former Surfside Beach Mayor Doug Samples, who died last week. The memorial service is planned for 11 tomorrow morning at the Surfside United Methodist Church. Samples became mayor back in 2012 and served until 2016 after being elected to serve on town council back in 2002. The South Carolina House of Representatives honored Samples in 2016 with a resolution recognizing him for improving and maintaining the quality of life. Cause of death has not yet been officially released yet. And Halloween is just around the corner, and that means there are only about two weekends left to check out the Purgatory Haunted House in Marion. That's right, in News 13's Jack Bill, you stop by to see how they're serving up scares for a good cause. <laughs> There's nothing like that here in Marion, and the youth here need something to do. And that's why we did it, and something affordable for everyone. Michelle Cap says she's put on the haunted house for the past two years, but this year it benefits a foundation to help children with autism. Graham's Dream for Autism, and we host it, and he gets 95 percent of our proceeds. But it helps with schooling and different therapeutic needs. The nonprofit is named after her son, who she says sometimes puts on a mask to get involved with the scares. She says they've raised around $2,000 so far. It costs $10 to get in and takes about 10 minutes to go through. The people were very engaging. Like they made sure we were scared. It was fun. Uh, got me scared a little bit, took off. Jasmine Mann, Camille Manning, ran all the way back to their car at one point. I just felt like the dude that was at the bonfire was about to come chase us, so I just knew I had to do another gear. <laughs> Cap says there's nothing like giving customers a good fright. It's just fun to me. I like <clears throat> to see people scared and have fun. <laughs> Jack Billiou, News 13. Palmetto State Emergency Managers want to make sure you are ready in case an earthquake strikes. The state is taking part in earthquake preparedness week, and it actually starts today. The state's emergency management division encourages everyone to use this time to learn about the state's seismic fault system as well as how to best prepare for earthquakes. Thursday, more than a million people in eight different states and Washington, D.C. will take part in a safety drill called the Great Southeast Shakeout. That's part of an international effort to encourage people to practice staying safe during earthquakes. Covering the Carolinas now, a police officer was hurt and another killed during an overnight crash in North Carolina. North Carolina Highway Patrol responded at around quarter of three this morning to the crash on Interstate 540 near Nightdale. The two officers were hit by an oncoming vehicle while responding to another crash. 
23-year-old Ryan Hayworth was the officer who was killed. He was also a member of the U.S. Army. His training officer was seriously injured and is being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. All right, coming up after the break, health officials' guidance on the upcoming holiday season and the latest on those COVID booster shots. You're watching News 13 at 11. Stay with us. More coverage you can count on. We'll be right back. Welcome back to more local coverage you can count on. An FDA advisory panel's recommendation of a booster for the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines could get the green light this week. Yeah, and Chief White House Medical Advisor Dr. Anthony Fauci delivers some hopeful words about the upcoming holiday season. CBS News correspondent Tom Hansen reports from New York. Dr. Anthony Fauci says families with fully vaccinated adults could be able to safely spend the holidays together this year. You can enjoy Halloween, trick-or-treating, and certainly Thanksgiving with your family and Christmas with your families. That's one of the reasons why we emphasize why it's so important to get vaccinated. And soon, many Americans may be able to boost their defenses against COVID-19. As early as this week, the FDA and CDC could sign off on Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccine boosters. The CDC says less than 60% of the population is fully vaccinated. In Arkansas, a new law will require employers to let workers get around vaccine requirements if they're tested weekly or show proof they carry antibodies for the virus. The employers are in a tough position. They should have the prerogative to make those decisions, and I support that. In Chicago, the head of the local police union is urging officers to defy last Friday's deadline to report their vaccination status. The National Guard is standing by in case the city sees a shortage of police officers. We um, can fully expect uh, that members uh, will show up. And unless they're told to go home, they need to report for duty. According to the nation's largest police union, the number one killer of officers in 2020 and 2021 was COVID-19. Many of those lost their lives keeping our society safe, serving on the front lines in those dark early days of the pandemic. But now, let us prevent the preventable tragedies. New York City is debating a vaccine mandate for its police force. The current NYPD vaccine rate is close to 70%. Tom Hanson, CBS News, New York. All right, right now you're taking a live look over the Myrtle Beach Boardwalk. Stay with News 13. More coverage you can count on. We'll be right back.